Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Samantha, and I'm in client services here at the Retirement Group. I moderate these weekly webinars. You are joining us today for one of our weekly question and answer sessions, where in a moment, we're going to be joined by our advisor, Wesley Boudreau, who will be answering some of the most frequently asked questions we've received lately from Raytheon employees. Uh, these questions are going to be surrounding current economic changes brought on by inflation and other factors. Wesley will be answering these questions and giving some practical advice so that you feel a little more confident in your retirement journey. Before I bring Wesley on, however, I'd like to just remind you, although we work very closely with both active and retired members of Raytheon, we are not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by Raytheon. The Retirement Group is a completely independent group of financial advisors, so please keep that in mind. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker, Wesley Boudreau. Hello, Wesley. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, that uh, introduction, Samantha. Like she said, we're going to be going over just some different questions we've consistently been getting from uh, corporate employees as they kind of navigate the transition process into retirement. This is both from um, individuals we're currently working with and uh, retirees we've been working with for a while as well, because let's face a lot has changed in the last year and a half or so, especially with inflationary pressure. So there's a lot to review uh, or update reviews if you haven't done one in a while for your financial plan. Uh, before we get started, just a quick reminder who the Retirement Group is for those of you who do not know who we are. Again, we are an independent financial advisory firm that focuses on working with corporate employees and help them transition into retirement. And we've been doing this for a little bit over 30 years with uh, quite a few different companies. But what we tend to do is uh, each advisor focuses on maybe five or six different companies so they have a deeper understanding of your specific benefits plans inside and out. So what that allows us to do is kind of hold your hand through that transition process and make sure you don't make any mistakes as you do leave the company. Uh, whether you've got questions on the pension, uh, the 401k, healthcare retiree medical benefits, things like that, we can help you out there. Uh, but like I said, the goal is to make sure you understand those benefits. So when you do walk out that door, you're maximizing what that company gives you, which in turn is going to help you out throughout retirement. We do have offices throughout the country. So rest assured, if you need to sit down with somebody face to face, we can probably still accommodate that. Uh, but let's face it, this day and age, it's very easy to have web meetings, uh, phone call, email. Uh, just let us know what your preferred communication is. We'll be happy to accommodate you there as well. And I'll probably reference uh, once or twice to some of these questions here, it looks like. Uh, but uh, one of the best things to do is to take us up on our complimentary cash flow analysis. This is essentially a financial plan specific to your situation and specific to your company plans to make sure you are on the right path to retire when you want to. Uh, you may come to us and say, hey, Wesley, I'm thinking about retiring at age 62. Or maybe it's at age 60, my last son's going to graduate college. I want to retire then. Let's take a look at the numbers. Let's see, are you on the right path to meet that? Uh, or could you go earlier if you want to? Or uh, are we going to come back and uh, not shy away from telling you, hey, you might want to, but you need to work another year or two because this or that. And so we'll talk about some of that throughout the course of these, uh, these questions too, because a lot of it's going to come back to your personal situation and knowing what you're trying to achieve versus just a blanket answer on uh, what's going on in the economy right now. So with that, let's kind of get into some of these questions that uh, we have been seeing. Uh, first one, uh, many of my colleagues are delaying retirement due to financial concerns. Uh, should I be revising my retirement strategy in light of the current economic factors? So this is obviously a big one that we're getting. It's a big one that we uh, that we proactively tell people to review as well, uh, especially given what happened last year in 2022. Uh, I don't want to call it, a, uh, it's kind of a black swan event, uh, and we've never seen interest rates rise that quickly. But again, it was semi-self-induced by the Fed. Uh, but raising those interest rates so rapidly, what it did was two different things. It had an effect on the stock market and the bond market. Um, so for most of you, your portfolios, no matter where you were, uh, probably suffered a, a good bit uh, in 2022. But what it also did was uh, it's affecting the pension calculations for any of you that uh, do have pension plans still. A lot of the companies we work with do have pension plans and they still offer lump sum. Uh, lump sums are calculated based upon interest rates. When those interest rates went up, it drove down a lot of lump sums. So again, that's going to change some of the things. So I might have had somebody that we were talking to maybe a, a year and a half ago. They looked at their maybe their 401k was $500,000 and their pension was a million dollars. Now, fast forward 2022 hits, maybe their 401k dropped a little bit. Maybe it's down to 450 or something. And their pension, if they were taking that lump sum, is $7 million might be down to 800,000 or 850 or something like that because of how high the interest rates rose. So that's definitely a, uh, a hindrance, if you would, to that retirement plan, uh, you know, having, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, uh, you know, less than what you thought uh, starting, that may or may not change your situation. So it is important to uh, not necessarily revise, but review 
um, uh, your, uh, um, your intentions. Like I said before, uh, you tell us when you're thinking about retiring and we'll be able to run through the financial situation to show you if you're on the right path. So in that case, for somebody that may have been uh, maybe, you know, $100,000, $200,000 short from where they were a year or two ago, that may have a fa that may have a waiting on it, but it may not uh, may not change the retirement plan. It may be that they look at it and realize, okay, they can still retire, but maybe there's gonna be a little bit less to pass on to their beneficiaries. And let's face it, again, a financial plan is gonna be, you know, hopefully looking out 20, 30 years down the road, maybe longer if you've got good longevity on your side. So a lot of these things can change. So it's really important just to revisit the situation, not necessarily change your retirement decision, but revisit it, make sure it's still appropriate for you. And then we can talk about adjustments if you should uh, work a little bit longer to uh, either pad that or because interest rates are changing and looking at your pension plan. So again, give us a call. We can kind of run through that on a one-on-one -on -one basis to give you the true answer. Uh, let's see, question two. Uh, concerning the concerns about the economy's volatility and impacts on stock markets and investment performance, uh, should I be more cautious about stock-heavy portfolios? Uh, this one, again, is going to depend upon your personal situation. Obviously, if you're somebody who's 25 versus somebody who's 55, there's a difference in what your risk tolerance is going to be and uh, what type of risk you can take in that 401k plan. Um, now, ultimately speaking, I think uh, most of us all understand there's obviously volatility in the stock market. You're going to see the ups and downs. Uh, the biggest, simplest way I like to say it is the stock market's like the adult roller coaster, you know, um, versus you know a diversified portfolio introducing bonds and uh, and cash into that mix is going to make it more like a a, a more subtle roller coaster still the ups and downs but maybe like that church fair with uh, less bumps and bruises along the way um, but if you've got a long time ahead of you um, 10 15 20 years or so you can weather that uh, that adult roller coaster the stock market with the ups and downs you'll go through some market cycles but over the long term historically it's going to outperform over the short term it all depends upon uh sequence of returns and when you're making that decision. So let's go back to somebody who's 25. Uh, yeah, stock heavy portfolio is probably, probably okay for you. But for uh, somebody who's 55, maybe they'll kind of retire in the next year or two, or maybe 60 even, um, they're getting closer to that point of potentially taking money out of their portfolio. So you need to uh, have a, a deeper analysis as to what you're trying to achieve there and whether or not it makes sense to keep that stock heavy portfolio. It could be that you've got other assets set aside or maybe you're focusing on, hey, I'm going to take the pension as a lump sum. Let's consider that cash. So I'm OK being more stock heavy. That all goes into a review process that we provide for you by looking at that cash flow analysis, then backing into your 401k review or outside assets if you want to review those as well. We can let you know where you stand, if it makes sense for your risk tolerance, or if you should make any potential changes. Now, at the retirement group, we actually, uh, on the stock side of things, we have a more value slanted focus. And that means we focus on companies that uh, have been around for a long time, uh, have uh, consistently paid dividends, have a little more cash on hand to weather storms. So that's another situation. It's not just stock heavy or not. It's about where are you investing in that stock market. So if we go back to last year, uh, 2022, when those interest rates rose so quickly, that's going to have a bigger effect on growth companies that are borrowing money to essentially continue to fuel their growth. Whereas companies that have been around for a while or paying dividends, have cash on hand, are able to weather the storm better. So there tends to be a flight to quality there uh, when things change as well. So again, yes, it's really important to understand where you specifically fit into the mix, and then we can look and, and determine whether or not you're, you're, stock, you're too stock heavy or not. But for most of you that have kind of uh, just you know, run the course, kind of uh, done your work and put your money in there and haven't made a change, chances are you might be a little bit too aggressive. So it's worth giving us a call to at least run a uh, 401k review as well, or look at your overall assets to make sure it is in line with what you're looking to do. Another question. Um, how might persistent inflation impact my retirement savings? Uh, hopefully it's not too persistent for too much longer here. We don't want to go back to the 80s. Uh, honestly, as a fiduciary, I'd probably fire myself if I if I could tell you you can get out you can get out there and get guaranteed CDs for you know 12, 13 uh, percent. Our, our industry might be over at that point. But uh, hopefully we're going to see the aspect of uh, uh, this inflation kind of uh, subsiding a little bit here. Uh, maybe one or two more potential uh, uh, Fed hikes, but I think we're hopefully towards the tail end of this. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean that it's going to drop uh, dramatically tomorrow. Um, we hope we don't see interest rates drop too quickly because that would mean we're probably looking at another economic situation where the Fed's lowering the interest rates. Uh, um, and so what's going to happen is we're going to see that uh, impact of inflation. Uh, you, you saw the, the big shift last year in 2022, but it's also going to shift, uh, you know, impact it going forward. Obviously, things have gotten more expensive. Um, I don't know. I, I the you know, the average household expenses in the last uh, year or two have been kicked around between an extra $8,000, $10,000 or so. So obviously, if somebody was talking to me a year ago saying, hey, Wesley, I'm going to retire. I'm spending $70,000 a year. 
But now if we're thinking maybe it's 80,000, that's a big significant change going forward. Um, but the other thing to think about is that inflation um, may not impact you the way it impacts everybody else. There's the CPIU, which is the, the urban inflation we always see reported. And that factors into different equations as far as you know, food, energy, clothing, medical, things like that. There's a CPIE, which is for uh, elderly, those who are uh, those who are retirement age. So it's a little bit different, but you may have a completely different one. Your house might be paid off. You may not travel anywhere. Um, you may make all your all your food at home. So inflation may not be a huge issue to you, um, but it may be a, a portion. So that's where, again, it comes into running that cash flow analysis, taking a look at your specific situation and seeing how it's going to affect you. Uh, so that's that's how inflation could affect you on the spending side of things. And keep in mind, inflation. Um, it, it, it's ebbs and flows. There's high points, low points, but over the long term, um, it, it should work out. And we run that cash flow analysis to show you uh, from a conservative standpoint if you're in good shape. And then on the saving side, as far as what you're putting into your 401k or, or you know what you're doing prior to retirement, obviously that inflation can affect your performance of your portfolio. We saw what it did last year, um, but that's a, important to review that and uh, and figure out uh, where you stand on there. Again, going back to that previous question, uh, what your allocation looks like, and we can help you help you review that. Uh, another one here. Uh, are there specific financial instruments, excuse me, specific financial instruments in a 401k that can help hedge against inflation? <laughs> um, yeah, there are. Uh, the question becomes, though, uh, does your 401k have that? So, again, this is more of a general uh, webinar, not a company specific one. Uh, every company has a different 401k plan. Uh, some are very, very uh, restrictive where they don't have that many choices in them. Some have got more choices. Uh, most 401ks have maybe you know 15 to 25 different mutual funds and choices within them. And some uh, allow you to actually have what's called a brokerage link where you can link it to a brokerage account for a portion of it sometimes and uh, actually have more choices. So you've got more inflationary uh, protection options in there. But some things to look for would be uh, you know, whether or not you've got, uh, you've got gold, uh, you know, treasury inflation protected securities, uh, real estate, commodities, um, just general stocks uh, in general uh, are also a hedge against inflation in some cases. So there are different ways to look at that, but again, it's going to depend upon what's available to you. Uh, some of you may not have that. You may just have a couple of stock choices, a couple of bond choices. But if you want to dig into that, uh, give us a call. We can review it. Another situation on the 401 case is uh, depend upon your age and depend upon the flexibility that plan gives you. Uh, in some cases, you might have the option to roll over a portion or all of it if you're over 59 and a half to an IRA, which is an individual retirement account. And that at that point, you've got access to pretty much anything that's out there whether you're going to do it on your own or work with a firm like the retirement group, then we can help you uh, discuss, uh, you know, some a, a broader range of deeper uh, inflationary protection options uh, for that overall portfolio uh, structure as well. Uh, another question we got here, if I decide to retire now, how can I ensure my retirement funds last despite rising inflation? Uh, so it's, it's a tough question, but the best way to do it is to kind of play it out and uh, run that cash flow analysis I mentioned before to see how it looks, not just now, but in 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, there may be different issues uh, for each person. Uh, it may be that uh, um, inflation, uh, like I said before, might might uh, be a big culprit to you, or it may not be. Uh, it may be a large chunk of your spending is a mortgage that's going to be paid off in 10 years. Now that mortgage rate is going to be uh, going to be fixed. It's not going to inflate. Uh, obviously, the taxes, insurance that will inflate over time as well. Um, you know, maybe you've got the you're looking at what most people do. They they tend to spend more the first maybe 10, 15, uh, 20 years if you're lucky. In retirement where you're traveling and doing more and then we unfortunately we tend to just slow down and inflation is not as big a concern except for medical costs and, and food but typically later in life you know our house is paid we got our furniture got our clothes got things like that we're probably not traveling quite as much so uh inflation is not necessarily going to be as ugly as what it could be uh for somebody that's um that's uh that, that, that that's uh that's uh <laughs> sorry that that's traveling more and, and and more productive or or uh, or getting out there a lot more um, but as far as, uh, you know, how that can that can also affect your funds, it gets back into the um, the reviewing of the um, of the uh, the portfolio. Um, so, again, another thing to keep in mind is uh, that inflation can affect those portfolios. We saw that happen. So the, another aspect to think about is maybe compartmentalizing your portfolios once you retire, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on figuring out, OK, uh, let's have a conservative portfolio for the next five years of expenses. And let's look at something that's going to be more growth oriented or balanced. Uh, with a blend of growth and income for farther down there. There's a lot of different ways to look at it, but the best way is to kind of know what are you trying to solve for, what you're spending, and then we can back into what are some choices for you and what's the best portfolio structure to look at um, for you, whether it be within your 401k plan or whether it be within an IRA or other accounts we could help you out with personally as well. 
Uh, let's see, we got another one. How do rising interest rates from high inflation impact bond holdings in my retirement portfolio? Uh, so very simply put, when interest rates rise, you're going to see the uh, price of bonds go down. So let me give you a, uh, maybe a quick example. Let's assume that uh, that you know, um, a company issued a bond to to maybe they were they were uh, funding the, the the building of a new factory or something like that. Let's assume they issued this bond uh, four or five years ago. And if they issued that 30 year bond, what a typical bond is, it's an IOU for 30 years. So um, let's say they went out there and they you know issued bonds to cover a billion dollar factory they were building. And maybe the interest rate was going to be 4%. So they're going to pay you 4% a year for the next 30 years and then give you back your $1,000 bond. So bonds are usually issued at $1,000 par. So they'll give you 4% four, uh, uh, four, uh, 4 each year. Fast forward to today. Now, if, that, if they want to build a new factory, they're not going to be able to get away with uh, with only paying 4%. They may have to go out there and pay you know, 6 6.5%. So if I can go out there and, and buy a bond that's going to pay me 6.5%, why in the world would I want your old 4% bond if you were going to try and sell that? So let's assume you didn't hold it to maturity and you went to go out there and sell it. You're not going to get $1,000 back. You're going to get a, a, um, a discount on it. Somebody might only give you you know, $990 or $985 or $970, depending upon the interest rate calculation there. So that's where you see bond prices drop when interest rates uh, interest rates rise. And the opposite is going to happen. If interest rates go down, you'll see your bond prices go up because that 6.5% bond is uh, more attractive then maybe a future bond that might only pay 5%. Now, what we saw last year was the interest rates rose so quickly that it hammered the bond market. And uh, hopefully we're at that point where things are actually uh, kind of stabilizing here. Uh, we're at a uh, you know very inverted yield curve where the short-term rates are a lot higher. Uh, but once we kind of settle off, uh, kind of a, kind of normalize, uh, you know, flatten the yield curve, get back to normal yield curve, we'll start to see those bond rates um, uh, a little bit higher down the road. And that will, uh, that will, you'll see probably more of a flight to quality towards the bond market as well. So hopefully a lot of the pain is behind us. That doesn't mean we still can't have some more price fluctuations in there. But uh, uh, typically what we'll start to see is the yield's going to be higher on, on bonds uh, going forward. And it'll get more to, I don't want to say a norm, but get back to that, uh, the ability to diversify a portfolio more appropriately with uh, with bonds in the mix than what it has been the last uh, you know a decade and a half or so. Uh, so hopefully that helps. But uh, um, if you have deeper questions, again, let's look at your specific portfolio in there. Um, OK, I guess that, that's it for some of the questions we have right now. Uh, like we said before, you can always give us a call to go through your your own questions. A lot of these, I, I think I kind of reference back to the cash flow analysis or towards calling us because there's not really a blanket answer on some of these. It's really about what your personal situation is. Uh, so we got a couple of things up here. There's a QR code if you want to uh, scan that uh, here with your uh, phone soon. Um, that's going to take you into our scheduling uh, uh, calendars, I believe, where you can get in there and schedule an appointment with myself or one of the other advisors with the retirement group to uh, go through questions you have or uh, go through that financial plan or start that financial planning process to see at least where you stand. Um, but most of those, I think, are calendar access about a week out. So if you need something sooner, just give us a call. Uh, so any questions, you can reach us at info at retirementgroup.com or call us at 1-800-900-5867. I want to thank everybody for taking a little bit of time uh, to join us for some of those questions. Uh, again, a quick reminder, uh, even though we work extensively with a lot of different Fortune 500 companies, that does not mean we are employed by your company nor endorsed by them. But again, if you've got company-specific questions about your pension plan, 401k, healthcare, things like that, we can go through that with you as well. So any questions, just reach out and give us a call at 800-900-5867. Thank you and have a great day. 